A while ago, I took a look at an Airwick uh, air aromatizer that uses bottles of aroma chemical with a, a wick on top. And it's got an ultrasonic atomizer and it, every so often it will just power up and it will just put a whiff of this stuff into the air. They've already released the Mark II version of it and I thought I'd get one of them to actually compare the circuitry inside. I didn't go into it too deeply when I took this one apart because I was travelling at the time. So I'm going to go into this one a lot deeper and reverse engineer it. But I'm expecting the circuitry to be a lot simpler. But I shall show you the uh, mechanism inside. I'll actually turn it on and show you it running. So I've got a bit of card here so you can actually see the haze as it comes out. You can see it there. Uh, if I was to use a little light and shine it into it, you'd probably see it better. Yeah, that's going to make it more visible. But it's basically ultrasonically atomized aroma. And I want to point out that when you initially power it up, I've not tried this for a long period of time, but it will initially put out quite a lot, possibly just to sort of prime the air with aroma when you first get it. And it has uh, four positions to the switch. It's got off, low, medium and high. Let's open it up. So the bottle, and the bottles have changed. The bottle comes with a tamper-proof cap to stop kids opening it and drinking it, which is quite good. So it's got that clicky, clicky thing that you have to push it down really hard to actually unscrew it. It also takes batteries. I've got rechargeable batteries in this in a different way to the previous one. So the batteries in this one go inside in this sort of compartment here. And that differs to the previous version which the top pops off and then you get the battery compartment here and the aroma compartment here. This definitely has very much streamlined design. I'm going to remove this bit of card. I do not need this piece of card now. So the sequence, when you take the base off, you have to put the batteries in first uh, because otherwise you wouldn't get the aroma in. So they go in fairly easily. It's a quite a nice design. Then the aroma bottle goes in. Well, let's use this one and stick it in. Uh, it just pushes in, and then when you turn it on, it does that whole sequence. Initially, when you turn it on, the LED in the end will glow blue initially, and then it will do that sort of hazing out the aroma type thing, which it is doing right now, but less visible because I've not got that black backdrop. Okay, enough waffle. Let's uh, open it up. A provisional exploration shows that there are two screw holes down here, quite well recessed. I thought this was another screw hole and spent ages trying to get a screwdriver long enough to go down into it, this one. It turns out that is possibly just a electrical test point for the batteries. So they can actually put this in a jig and it will power it up for testing in the factory. So there's one screw down here and there's another screw over here. Is this going to release it? I'm kind of expecting the circuitry to be super simple now. Well, the whole thing comes out. That's quite neat. And there's a circuit board, which is presumably held in by the actual case itself. It does look like it does hold it in the case. Um, it's a very bare circuit board. Oh, I lie. It's not bare at all. It's actually got quite a lot on it. Right, tell you what. One moment, please, while I reverse engineer this. I'll be back in a jiffy. The reverse engineering is complete. That took quite a time because this is a mind bender. I didn't reverse engineer the previous one because uh, I was traveling away from home and didn't have the facilities to blow up images and, and take a closer look. So I kind of just assessed it at that time. I don't think the circuitry has changed that much. There's a few changes, but it's all more or less the same. So on this side of the circuit board, which is reversed uh, for ease of reverse engineering, we have this switch which chooses between off, mid, uh, medium and max. We've got a little inductor here which turns out to be for generating a 12 volt rail and then we've got a larger inductor for the piezoelectric crystal. Note the missing connector here. It was one of those annoying connectors that when you try pulling the plug off, it pulls the whole housing off. The only other things on this side are another connector for the LED on the sort of atomizer section and a little crystal here. This is uh, 2021. This is a very recent, March 2021. Oh, Ralph's birthday, 24th of March 2021, no less. Interesting. Uh, here's the back of the circuit board. Well, the 
track side, well, the component side for most of the stuff, really. It's got a custom program microcontroller, I'm guessing. It has a little voltage boost circuit based on a B628 style chip. It's got a MOSFET down here that does some really weird stuff. Um, it's got a MOSFET over here for the uh, atomizer section. And initially, when I looked at this circuit board, I thought maybe it had the option for a remote control because I thought that was a little infrared remote control receiver. It's just the facility to put another MOSFET, uh, a through-hole one, on top of the circuit board. But they've allowed the functionality of either putting it on this side or the other side. Um, and that's more or less it. Anything else worth mentioning this side? Notable, this little Zener diode here. Uh, for capping the voltage across this for a very odd reason. Okay, that's more or less it. Let's go straight to the schematic. Here's the schematic. Let me zoom down a little bit more. So I've divided it into sections because it's quite a complicated circuit. The person who designed this did a very good job of actually fitting it all onto a single-sided circuit board with just one link here. They did very well. So we have the stack of three AA cells. It's worth mentioning that this unit will operate down to three volts, so it will actually, you can run up with nickel metal hydride cells. Decoupling capacitor across that, and that gives you a, the supply rail of roughly 3 to 4.5 volts. The microcontroller supply rail can be fed from two sources. It can either be coupled directly to that rail by this MOSFET. And it's worth mentioning that the MOSFET has a pull-down resistor. It's a P-channel MOSFET, which means that by default, even before the microcontroller is activated, uh, this MOSFET will turn on and it will basically connect the battery connection to the microcontroller supply line and it will get whatever the battery voltage is at that time. However, when the microcontroller decides to actually get active um, and turn the uh, piezoelectric disc on to actually atomize the aroma, it puts a 12 volt enable out, but that 12 volt enable also goes to this MOSFET, which actually, because it, this is going positive, it effectively turns the MOSFET off. But it turns a 12 volt supply on that then uh, powers this via a current limiting resistor, and there is a Zener diode to cap that at 5 volts. So it effectively powers the microcontroller at the full 5 volts. This will do two things. It will uh, make it more stable if the battery voltage is dipping with the extra load of the uh, boost for the piezoelectric device because it makes it independent of the battery voltage. That can theoretically down to about 2 volts and this, the circuitry that boosts it up will still get it up to 12 volts. But it also provides it with a nice stable 5 volts which might be quite important because it's got a sense line coming into that to sense the activity of the piezo piezoelectric. Other things here, we've got the crystal with its two load resistors, we've got the little switch that goes between off, uh, low, medium, high. It's worth mentioning that off isn't actually off, it's always active, uh, but when you turn it into the off position, it signals to the microcontroller it's off, but it just goes into a low current standby mode. And we've got the blue LED in the tip of the atomizer here that makes it glow, which is powered directly from that rail and via a 1K resistor. So initially, when this uh, starts up, the LED, if the batteries were running low, this LED would uh, be a little bit dimmer, but when it actually does its uh, ramp up thing and does the atomization, it's then powered via the 12 volt supply for the piezoelectric and that resistor, so that it's gonna be brighter. It's an odd arrangement. Okay, that's that side covered. Let's go to the next page. So the three outputs to the microcontroller, are 12 volt enable, the piezoelectric drive and the sense back from the piezo. When it wants to activate the piezo, it sends the enable signal to this little B628 boost chip, which then uses this inductor pulsed to the zero volt rail uh, to put an inductive a charge on the inductor. But then when it turns off, uh, it goes through this Schottky diode to uh, charge up these capacitors and there's two resistors across here that are used to set the voltage because this is a programmable uh, voltage uh, regulator, boost regulator. In this case, the choice of resistors they've chosen uh, will give it roughly 12 volts out. A couple of uh, capacitors, a small one to a large one, just uh, the small one for uh, dealing with high frequencies and the larger one just as a buffer. 
But that feeds the piezoelectric circuitry then, which has a larger inductor and an N-channel MOSFET with a 1-ohm resistor in its source. Is that right? I think it is the source. Um, and that is used for sensing the current flowing through the inductor. So when it turns the piezo crystal on, it uh, turns this MOSFET on. No, when it turns the inductor on, uh, it turns uh, the MOSFET on. Current flows through. As the current, the magnetic field is built up, it uh, the current increases slightly until the voltage across this 1 ohm resistor, which is sensed by the microcontroller via this 100 ohm resistor and a little filtering cap, it detects when a certain threshold has been reached and will turn it off. Uh, and then as the magnetic field collapses, it will potentially put out quite a high voltage. Now, this is an odd arrangement here. They have two capacitors in series. Couldn't measure them because they were in the circuit, effectively. And the piezoelectric crystal across that. Um, I've not not quite sure how they're what they're actually doing here, but the the circuitry is such that it, it's actually quite per it's driving it quite powerfully. The crystal itself is a disc with the wick pushed against it, and it's a stainless steel disc. Well, this thing has just decided to atomize aroma right now, but it's got a, a little disc. Well, you you'll be able to see the little disc with the if I zoom down this. You can see the little dimple in that disc. Okay, so it's a disc with a little dimple, raised dimple, with tiny little holes perforated in it, and then a circular ring of piezoelectric material with one connection being the disc itself, and then there's another electrode on top that couples to the other side the piezoelectric material. And when that, uh, when you put the aroma cartridge in, this is actually pushed up slightly because there's a spring and a spacer pushing down it to protect the surface of the crystal and also to provide the correct pressure. So as you put it in, it pushes up against the spring and it puts a suitable pressure against the top of the wick. The wick delivers the liquid. This disc then, when it's being agitated at ultrasonic frequencies, it smashes up and down imperceivably and atomizes the liquid through these uh, little holes here, shratching into tiny little droplets, which creates that plume of vapour. It's a very odd circuitry. Um, just so you can evaluate things again, because it might make more sense now. So here's the supply for the microcontroller being fed from that 12 volt reel via the resistor and capped to 5 volts. But other at other times when the 12 volt is off, this MOSFET's on connecting the rail to the uh, battery directly. Uh, the microcontroller has its own little crystal, which is most likely the crystal is more for the providing a stable frequency to the piezo. I think it's. I don't think there's any resonant frequency thing being done. I think it's just a fixed frequency match to that crystal. I don't know if it's able to actually sense anything other than the current through the inductor. Um, and when the 12 volt enable is enabled, well, that's uh, bringing this voltage regulator to create 12 volts, which is normally just floating at roughly the battery level, just because it's not uh, it's not being boosted by the inductor. The current will still find its way through the inductor and diode, but you'll get a, a slightly lower than battery level voltage. But when it's needed, it just boosts it up to that 12 volts. It's very unusual. It's quite a nice design. It's quite a complex design. And very similar to the original design, which suggests that it was a successful product. And certainly they've reduced the size. It's got a nice, I like the flat top here. It's quite a pleasant finish. Also notable compared to the other one, that when you do turn it on, it does prime that, uh, it does prime the output with a significant amount of the vapour initially. Because I guess it's just basically building up, because you've just turned it on, it's just building the aroma up in the air. But it's quite a neat design. A very clever design, actually. The software in that chip, if it is if it is a microcontroller, I think it probably is, though, will be part of the magic of this. Uh, there'll be a lot of work uh, involved in that developing that software to match the hardware. But that's very unusual. The power rail being fed either from the batteries for the, via the MOSFET or the 12-volt rail once it's boosted for the giving extra oomph to the crystal. 
the piezoelectric crystal. Uh, that's quite clever. It's something I've not seen before. So that is it. The Airwick Aroma Unit. Oh, worth mentioning. On the back it says, uh, RB Hygiene Home France and uh, RB UK Hygiene Home Commercial Limited, United Kingdom. Uh, very odd. I don't know what that means. I don't know uh, if that's just another subset of the Airwick brand. But uh, it's neat. It's definitely an improvement. It means the smaller size means they can fit more in a crate ultimately when they're packaging it. It also looks quite neat. And I think they have refined the electronics a little bit too. So pretty neat. Quite a nice little unit.